What's up YouTube? Leo here, Kill Mode RC. I have a fun little project for you guys. Uh, so, let's get moving along. Um, what we have here is, you can see that, a 2.4G 2000 milliwatt radio signal booster. Uh, we're gonna attempt to hook this into our radio and see what kind of uh, range extension we get out of this. Um, I'm hoping for a good amount. Uh, so, especially if you're doing speed runs, uh, radio signal is big. You don't want to lose radio signal at triple digits and watch your car go bye-bye. Um, so me, I don't use an expensive radio. I know a lot of the guys like their Futaba and their Spectrum and all that stuff. I use this little $150 Fly Sky radio. I think it's a great little radio. It gets really good range for what it is. It's touch screen. It's got some good stuff. Um, but this is not specific to any radio. You can use this with any radio as long as you do it properly. Um, so I've never tested the actual range on this radio. It's always been pretty good to me. I know another guy had the same radio he tested on YouTube. I think it went some 800 feet, which on a normal day, uh, 800 feet in either direction, you know, it's over a quarter mile. That's really good distance for speed runs. It's, that usually would work pretty well. Um, but you know, that's an open area, uh, with no signal interference, no trees, no buildings blocking. So, you know, that may be the best case scenario. So what we want to do is have worst case scenario being a thousand feet. So we're hoping that this will help with that. Now, this is not my idea. I'm not the first one to do this. Uh, my buddy Scott Thompson told me about this. I don't know who told him about it, but he did on his radio and another guy, um, and Seems to be working fantastic for them. They said they had uh, interference before and, and no more. And my new spot that I go to has a radio tower out there and it does give us some issues. So um, we'll move right along here. This comes just like this, a little package, fancy. It's got this little diamond looking thing on it. Um, comes with your new antenna. And then it also comes with your coaxial cable. Um, this particular coaxial cable that it comes with is designed to be soldered on. Uh, I don't want to solder on. I don't want to solder it to this which would require me to unsolder my factory uh, antenna and what if it doesn't work properly and now I've got a lot more work on my hands. So what I did, I went ahead prior to the video here and I disassembled my radio. I'm not going to get into how to take your radio apart. You're going to have to figure that out on your own. And every radio manufacturer is going to be different for the cable that they use in theirs. I believe Futaba uses a double uh, coaxial cable. I don't know the name of that cable. Um, or that end, but I believe it's that on both ends and it just screws in. Uh, it's what I've been told. I um, haven't tried it on a Futaba yet. This particular radio uses this little strange looking, I believe it's called like an IPX plug. No, I don't know if you can, let me angle this properly so you can see it. Um, so this is where we are here. And you can actually see, so you know you got the right cable. It says ANT there. You know, we'll see that in the video because it's really small. Um, but that's your antenna. So you'll have to figure out what your radio is. I don't even know if all of the FlySky radios use that same cable. But what I went ahead and did is figured it out. And I found the actual cable that I need, which is going to be the coaxial end one, just like the one that came with the radio. And then the little... IPX plug on this end. So again, you'll have to figure it out on which radio you use, but I'm just giving you a general idea of how this works. So it's pretty cool. Uh, this has these little plugs on it. Let me get this out of the way. I don't want to break anything. And one of these, you know, you got a male and a female, will connect to your new radio or your new antenna, uh, like so. Let me do this real quick. This connects to a battery. Now this one is set for five to 15 volts of input. Um, I would say probably somewhere in the middle is where I'd wanna be. I'll probably get a little miniature 3S battery, 11, you know, 11.1 11 volts. Um, right now I have laying around just a little five cell uh, nickel metal battery. So I'm gonna use that for now because it's, uh, didn't realize for the video. I'll do this and I'll skip ahead. I'm actually have to put an adapter there. Um, but I'd recommend maybe a little two cell or three cell LiPo battery. Uh, something with some good amount of uh, milliamps to last you a little longer. You don't want this dying out on you. 
So then your other cable, which is the one that I purchased, is going to screw on here like so. So what we're going to do is, essentially, this connects on to your circuit board in your radio, or in your uh, transmitter, replacing this. So this will just be not, not used anymore. And then what you're going to have to do, like I already did pre, is drill a hole. You know, however you're going to mount this is going to be up to you, whatever's comfortable for you. So that runs through. And then, and I'll skip ahead in the video so you're not watching me do the whole thing. I'm going to mount this somewhere along the lines like this. Uh, probably use the, either double-sided tape or whatever. Um, and then really going to want to reinforce this where the wire goes through, whether you use hot glue or some sort of silicone or super glue. Because you want to hold that in place, you don't want that to be able to pull in and out and unplug from your circuit board. And then I'll probably just run the battery down to the bottom here and back up. And so you have the battery in the bottom, the booster here, and then the cable will go through and connect to your uh, transmitter. So what I'm going to do here, and this is really simple, it's a pretty simple setup if this works. Again, I don't know. Um, if you're watching this video, that means it probably worked. Um, because I wouldn't post the video if it wasn't working. I'm not sure why my light just turned off on my camera there, but we'll have to make do. <clears throat> so this, the way this uh, 1PX or IPX cable works uh, is pretty simple. It really just pops on there. So what you're gonna want is a little miniature screwdriver. And again, however yours is, take a look at it before you start prying at it and stuff and just try and figure out the way it works. You can't really see there because it's so out of focus, but it's just a tiny little pop-on connector. So what I'm going to do is just pop this one off. And hopefully it doesn't come off too easy because I don't want it to ever have to or have the ability to come off. There it goes. It just pops right off. So again, my antenna now is going to be rendered useless, the stock one. So I'm just going to leave it in there for aesthetic purposes. And then what I'm going to do here is try and figure out the orientation of this because, again, I don't want this to be able to pop off. So that means if I have to put this on and somehow secure it inside, then I'll do that. But I'm going to try and figure out the orientation first. But this is just going to pop on where the old one went off. Um, and, again, I would do this you know, through here first so that I can put it all together. But I'm, like I said, I'm gonna just show you really quick to make the video short, and then I'll skip ahead to uh, more finishing. And then eventually I'll do a signal range test and see what kind of range we get out of this, just to make sure I got the right plug. And yeah, that plugs right on, that's actually really snug, that feels better than the factory one. Um, so that just plugs on again. Now, what I'll do is I'll get this all set up and I'll come back and edit the video together so you can see, but it's really that simple. So now this is connected to my circuit board. Before you do all this, make sure you take out your battery or batteries, whatever yours runs on. Uh, you don't want to short circuit anything. This is going to connect to here. And that really just screws in. You can't mix them up because one's male, one's female uh, on the inside. You won't be able to mix them up. So just make sure you get the right cable. Now that screws right on, and this is gonna connect to my battery here, and that's really it. Uh, you can set this up with an on and off switch if you want. I'm just gonna plug it in and out as I use it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get this all put together and I'll come back and show you what it looks like finished up, but it's really that simple. I'll be right back. All right, YouTube. All right, so we're back, finished, finished up here. Um, so let me tell you how I do this. Um, I ended up uh, switching it around a little bit uh, made this little makeshift bracket. I'll change this after the video I just did this because I had a little piece of carbon left and I wanted to get it mounted somewhere other than on the side So what I did here um, remember what I said with that uh, Antenna now comes through the uh, Transmitter and up to the uh, signal booster Like I said here I took some hot glue and just glued it around here to keep this from being able to wiggle and move and pull out from the circuit board inside, because that's the last thing you want. Um, uh, looking back, I might have done something a little different, because that's a little more, not really permanent, because it's hot glue, I could always just peel it off. But if I ever need to open this up for whatever reason, I got no slack in there now, I can't just let it move through, so I have to actually peel this up and peel it off of the wire. No big deal though. Um, so it's looking like this now, set up. There's the new antenna. I don't know the range yet, it's nighttime, so I'll do a range 
test tomorrow. Um, but we know it's still working because she's over there hooked up to the Kimmo Typhon. Um, and of course, I mean, they're right next to each other, so I'm showing that it's got a full signal, but it would show that without this plugged on anyways because it still has the little antenna coming up through here. Um, so again, just to give a recap, all I did here is obviously I ordered uh, the range extender, which I'll put the part number in the body here. Um, opened up my radio uh, prior to setting up to see what kind of antenna cable I have in there and what kind of plug it requires. Um, mine, I believe it was called an IPX, I think is the name I got. Um, oh, where'd they go? Anyway, they were cheap. Oh, here it is. So this is the cable I used for the Fly Sky. if you want to try and find that same one you can. It was literally, I think, $6 for two of these. And I actually have another transmitter that I'll hook up to another one of these. Um, so again, opened it up, figured all that out. Literally just drilled a hole uh, through the transmitter in whatever spot, wherever you want. Ran it through, unplugged the factory antenna, plugged this on, pulled it through here. Uh, stabilized this, uh, glued it on, figured out a way to mount uh, the range extender, which is really simple. Uh, but again, this looks like crap. I'll change this after the video. Um, plugged them up. There's only one way they can plug uh, from the antenna to your new antenna here. Um, and then... Uh, you just used a small five cell nickel battery pack, 7.2 volt or whatever it is. Uh, oh, six volt actually, that one charges up to 7.2. And this is a uh, five to 15 volt input. So whatever you use, I'll probably end up switching this again, like I said, to a 3S or something a little stronger. I don't know if it'll help the signal or not, but it'll certainly keep me from running out of battery. Um, so just a little baby like 1200 milliamp 3S battery pack that probably $15. This, uh, Part is really cheap actually the uh, range extender I think it was about 35 bucks so uh, again that's really it um, really simple setup I'll do a range test tomorrow and see what kind of range we get and uh, we'll be back all right you two we are out here gonna do a quick um, range test with the new range extender so we got the kill mode buggy over there and I have my girlfriend is gonna have her walkie-talkie so I'm going to drive down the street here, probably about a quarter mile. I'm going to try for a quarter mile. And I'm going to turn the wheels, and she's going to respond every time I turn the wheels on the radio. So we'll listen in for the radio, and we'll GPS our distance down the street. So let's get that going. We'll be able to get at least a quarter mile. Whoops, camera. I uh, did a little quick test last night and I got about a thousand feet and we still had a full signal on the radio. So it's pretty impressive so far. So what I'll do is I'll get out about, let's go about a thousand feet first, maybe a little less, and we'll check it and do a radio check. The reason I wanted to do this at night last night, uh, just came out crappy video, was that I can see the uh, screen on my transmitter much better at night. So let's see how far we are here. 0.13 miles. Uh, so that's probably about 800 feet. So let's do a test here. It's working. All right, she responded, it's still working here. So let's get down to the end of this road, I measured out uh, this morning from where, damn it. Sorry guys, from where I dropped the car off down there to the end of the road here is a quarter mile, just over a quarter mile actually. Uh, so a quarter mile is uh, 1,320 feet. If we get 1,320 feet out of this radio, we are in good shape because there ain't no way I'm driving 1,320 feet because I can't see that far. So here we are we're at the end of the road. Let's give it a quick, quick test. Uh, check our GPS. Yeah, 0.26. So we're 
over over a quarter mile down. And you got radio confirmation. It was working as I turned. All right, YouTube. So there you have it. We just did a successful test with the, uh, the radio signal booster that we just installed. Uh, honestly, it took me probably less than 30 minutes to do the whole installation. Um, and that was through figuring out at the same time. So it's really, really a simple project. Uh, probably cost with the battery, uh, $15 battery, maybe 50 bucks. So for $50, you could turn an ordinary radio into a range machine. So we rent on the GPS, if you saw in the video, uh, it cut out early, uh, 0.268, damn it, I'm sorry guys. So 0.268 miles is equivalent to 1,415 feet. That is a lot of range. Uh, I think it had a lot more because it still had a pretty strong signal um, and I was in like uh, my neighborhood so I don't have any more room to drive. Uh, but I don't ever have any intention of going that far because again, I can't see that far. So this was a really successful project. I'm really happy with the results. Um, and it looks like we've at, at, at the very least doubled our range. So really simple. I'll post the part numbers in the body of this video. And if you like my uh, videos, subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Instagram at Kilmart RC. And enjoy. Good luck.